This lush savanna is a perfect environment for growing flowers and shipping them to your corner market. But that kind of trade is also enmeshed in human rights battles, a controversy that has brought me here to Colombia, just outside Bogota. This is the other thing that flowed in this Yes, Colombia, much better known for cocaine, is the world's second largest supplier of cut flowers. 77% of America's flower imports come from Colombia. Almost 200,000 people work in the industry. And in high season, 28 cargo planes a day carry Colombian flowers to the U.S. And it's the hands of flower workers like 35-year-old Norma Reynosa that may have helped ready those flowers in your Mother's Day bouquet. My son wants to be a doctor. My daughter wants to be a nurse. And my little one a teacher. Colombia is caught up in an ongoing guerrilla war and is notorious for its narco-trafficking. It also has a problematic human rights record, and many in Washington see that as a reason to reject the pending U.S.-Colombian free trade agreement. Those human rights concerns are legitimate. But above all, I'd like them to keep in mind people like Norma. Until three years ago, she and her husband had a small cafe in her hometown. It became very successful, and therein lay her downfall. I had my own business, and so the guerrillas came to me. They have a custom called vaccination, which means you have to pay them money not to disturb you. Colombia's countryside has long been terrorized by narco guerrillas and political violence. Several of Norma's relatives were killed in the warfare. When the guerrillas asked for money, what did they say? Did they threaten you if you didn't give money? They gave us two choices, to leave quickly or else. In those days, there were lots of assassinations, and most times what they do is just kill the people and throw them in the river. In June 2005, Ms. Reynosa and her husband fled to the outskirts of Bogota, hoping to work in the flower trade. It must have been tough from being an entrepreneur running your business to all of a sudden being uh, at the bottom of the chain, being an employee. Starting from zero is tough. It's very hard. But to have work is a very good thing. And here is where Norma's story links us back to what's really at stake for her if the free trade agreement is rejected. Human rights abuses in Colombia are real, including killings of union members. But progress has been enormous as well, and most Colombians believe that the best path to improving human rights is security and economic growth. As for the arguments that Colombian exports will hurt American workers, what many don't realize is that Colombian goods already enter the U.S. duty-free. What the pact actually does is give American companies more access to Colombian markets. For the Colombians, it represents a commitment to open trade that will attract investments. Democrats, including Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, are opposed to the free trade agreement. And so I went to the presidential palace to visit with President Alvaro Uribe. He has 85 percent public approval ratings and is backing the pact strongly. We recognize our problems. We are doing our best. But we need a recognition of the progress Colombia is making. I wondered if he worried that the Democrats are generally retreating from past free trade commitments. I don't want to imagine this scenario. It could be devastating for the good relationship between the United States and our region. It's easy for politicians in Washington to say that we should punish Colombia because of its human rights problems. But do we really want to punish Norma? Norma, 
In the U.S., uh, some people say that the free trade agreement should be rejected because the human rights situation in Colombia is not so good. How would you reply to those people? Yo creo que yo pienso que en el momento de pronto la situación de de los derechos de los humanos derechos humanos es porque I believe one of the reasons the human rights situation is so bad is because there's no work. Si se aprueba se reforzaría. If it is approved, it will be much better because Colombians will export more and there will be more work for the people. In Bogota, Colombia, for the New York Times, this is Nicholas Kristof.